everyone, and welcome to United Way. My name is Dr. Larry Warner, and I have the privilege of serving as Chief Impact and Equity Officer with United Way of Rhode Island. And I'm happy to welcome you to today's event. We're in partnership with Economic Progress Institute. We'll be uh, releasing the 2022 Rhode Island Standard of Need report. Economic Progress Institute is a key partner of United Way and plays a critical role providing data, policy, and advocacy in support of uh, and pursuit of racial equity and economic mobility for all Rhode Islanders, but especially for our most vulnerable and marginalized communities. As part of that toolkit of uh, data resources and deliverables, the Rhode Island Standard of Need provides a metric by which we understand how Rhode Islanders, how much Rhode Islanders must earn in order to meet their most basic needs. The Rhode Island Standard of Need calculated and reported by the Economic Progress Institute. It's an incredibly important resource and has been produced for almost two decades. United Way and so many other community-based organizations rely on it to inform our work. And so for, we're grateful for this resource. Unfortunately, as we'll hear shortly, it's clear that communities of color continue to be disproportionately represented in the economically struggling number of Rhode Islanders. And so we must address the systemic barriers to economic mobility in order for our entire state to thrive. And so with that, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Dr. Alan Prinsky from Economic Progress System. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. To help our neighbors. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us to mark the launch of this important report, a report the Economic Progress Institute has published every year since 2004, making this the 10th edition. My name is Alan Krinsky. I'm the Director of Research and Fiscal Policy at the Economic Progress Institute. The Rhode Island Standard of Need is two things. It's the name of the report, and it's also a measure, a measure of how much it costs Rhode Islanders to meet their most basic needs without taking anything extra into account, such as vacations or leisure expenses. We look at the cost of housing, food, transportation, healthcare, childcare for those who need, and other miscellaneous expenses, such as clothing, telephone, and household supplies. Uh, I should note that sometimes we refer to the Rhode Island Standard of Need as the RISEN, using the first letters of the words R-I-S-N. At EPI, we use this shorthand routinely, but I realize that for most people, when I say the RISEN, it might sound like RISEN, R-I-S-E-N. And folks might be wondering, what is rising? What is going up? So I'll try to avoid the shorthand for this morning. Um, though, I suppose what the 2022 edition of the Rhode Island Standard of Need shows is that the cost of basic expenses is rising, and that the pre-tax income Rhode Islanders need to meet these basic expenses is also rising. Anyway, I want to run through for you the seven key findings of this year's report, featured also in the infographic we've shared with you. With each report, we ask two fundamental questions. What is the cost of meeting basic needs in Rhode Island? And how do state and federal supports help low-income individuals and families in Rhode Island meet these needs? In this year's report, we also ask about racial and ethnic inequities in being able to meet these needs. We ask about policy and program changes since the last report and how these have helped improve economic security for many Rhode Islanders. And finally, we ask what can be done to build upon the progress of the last two years. Okay, so the seven key findings. Key finding one, raising a family in Rhode Island is expensive. With this finding, we present the basic numbers of the Rhode Island standard of need. For single parents with two young children, for a, one a toddler, one of school age, for two parents with two such children, and for single adults. We do recognize that there are many different sorts of families and household arrangements, and that we are running the data only for a few common types. We look at the six different components of the measure, the, transportation, housing, et cetera, I mentioned, and then the pre-tax income required to meet these basic needs. We conclude that the annual expenses amount to $66,567 per year for a three-person family, $73,822 for a four-person family, and $27,793 for a single adult. When taxes and tax credits are taken into account, the annual pre-tax income required is $78,219 for a three-person family, $85,914 
$85,914 for a four-person family and $34,914 for a single adult. In this year's report, we direct a special focus towards housing because we have all seen housing costs, including rental costs, rise over the last year. And we have seen homelessness and the risk of becoming homeless remain severe problems for so many Rhode Islanders, something that's uh, only uh, more noticeable and severe as the weather turns colder. Thanks to the efforts of people at Housing Works RI, including with its recently released 2022 Housing Factbook and other organizations and advocates, many Rhode Islanders now know more about this and about the lack of affordable housing units and the lack of housing subsidies. Key finding two, many Rhode Island families do not earn enough to make ends meet. And there are racial, ethnic, and gender disparities in this regard. I want to highlight two points here. There are more data and details in the report, but two points I want to highlight. First, new this year to the report, we looked at gender differences in income and found that for single adults across the entire state population, for all races and ethnicities, for all those breakouts, women were less likely than men to earn the $34,914 required to meet basic needs. And black and Latino Rhode Islanders were less likely than white and Asian Rhode Islanders to have the income to meet basic needs. And this leads to the second point. Looking at families with children, the available data are reliable enough only for white and Latino Rhode Island families, the latter of which are much less likely to have the income to afford basic needs. But the point I should emphasize is that in so many areas, the available data are inadequate to show the diversity of Rhode Islanders and the differences among them. For example, we generally do not have reliable data to identify differences between, say, Rhode Islanders of South Asian backgrounds and Rhode Islanders of East Asian backgrounds, let alone differences within each of these groups. Part of this is due to the size of Rhode Island's population, part of this is due to what data are collected and how. Key finding three, the federal poverty level, or the FPL, is an inadequate measure of poverty. We need to look at twice the federal poverty level to get close to what a single adult needs to meet basic needs. For families with children, the Rhode Island standard need is between two and a half and three times the FPL. So when we see statistics about poverty say that 11.6% of Rhode Islanders are below the FPL, according to US Census data, and when we see the much higher levels for black and Latino Rhode Islanders, for example, we should keep in mind that these rates understate the percentage of Rhode Islanders living with economic insecurity. Key finding four. One way to narrow the gap between income and basic expenses would be increasing the minimum wage. Rhode Island is on the path to a $15 per hour minimum wage, though not scheduled to reach that point until January 2025. But as our report shows, a single adult needs more than that, $16.79 per hour to meet basic needs today. Today we're at $12.25 per hour, reaching $13 per hour on January 1st, 2023. The situation is only worse for a single parent with two children who would need $37.61 per hour to meet the family's needs and also worse for a four-person family with both parents working jobs at or near the minimum wage. Data from one of our national partners, the Economic Policy Institute, show that Rhode Island women will benefit more than men from increasing the minimum wage, and that Latino and Black Rhode Islanders will also benefit due to existing income disparities. Our neighbors, Massachusetts and Connecticut, will reach $15 per hour in 2023, meaning that many Rhode Island workers have the option of crossing the border to earn more money for similar work. There are also race and gender disparities in the tipped minimum wage, and states without a separate tipped minimum wage have shown strong employment and restaurant growth. Key finding five. For individuals unable to work and single parent families where the parent is unable to work, the cash assistance through supplemental security income, or Rhode Island Works respectively, is not enough to meet basic needs. The monthly SSI benefit is $880.92, $841 from the federal benefit, and $39.92 from the state supplement. In 2021, the benefit amounts for Rhode Island Works State's cash assistance program were increased for the first time in three decades. For example, for a three-person family, the Rhode Island Works monthly benefit rose from $540 to $721 per month, so another thing that's risen um, in the last two years, risen with an E. Nevertheless, these benefits are below 40% of the federal poverty level for a three-person family, and the benefits are not tied to inflation. While last year's benefits increased at a huge amount for decreasing economic insecurity, more can be done to increase the benefits, including linking them to inflation. Key findings six and seven. Key findings six and seven show two sides of the same coin. The first of these shows how the lack of subsidies and work supports can result in a gap between income and expenses. 
whereas the latter shows how such supports can make a critical difference in enabling a family to meet basic needs. Let me walk you through the example we share in the report for Key Finding 6. So there we consider a family of four, an essential worker who is a direct care worker providing home-based services for children and earning $15 per hour. The minimum wage for such workers per provision of the state fiscal year 2023 budget enacted a few months ago. Second, a supermarket worker, so a frontline worker, earning the current minimum wage of $12.25 per hour. A four-year-old child in an early learning program and a seven-year-old child in elementary school and needing after-school care. The parents have combined annual pre-tax income of $56,680. This amount is lessened by payroll, sales, and income taxes, and bolstered by federal and state child-dependent and earned income tax credits, leaving the family with $52,687 in net annual income. So the two children qualify for right care, the state's Medicaid program, though the parents do not. They do, however, qualify for a federal tax credit to pay for insurance coverage through the HealthSource RI in the healthcare insurance marketplace, reducing their monthly healthcare costs by over $600 per month to only $64 per month. This reduces their overall monthly expenses to $5,537, though they find them still find themselves $1,147 short each month. The family's pre-tax income puts them at 204% of the federal poverty level for a family of four. And this is slightly above the 200% FPL entry income limit for Rhode Island Child Care Assistance Program, CCAP. This leaves the family completely ineligible for the program, meaning they would need to pay over $1,800 a month, over $21,000 per year, for quality child care for their two children. This lack of eligibility is the difference between being able and not being able to make ends meet. Now, there was a great policy and program victory earlier this year, led by the Right from the Start campaign, when the entry income limit was raised from 180% to 200% of the federal poverty level. But this is still short of the 225% entry, income entry limit it was in 2006. One way to increase economic security for more working Rhode Islanders would be to adopt the proposal of advocates who are calling for raising the income entry limit to 250% of the FPL and the exit limit to 350%. We also know that other policies, like child tax credits, help raise children out of poverty. When the enhanced federal credit in 20, while the enhanced federal credit in 2021 lifted millions out of poverty, Congress did not renew it. Our example in Key Finding 6 also shows, shows how generous health care insurance subsidies made permanent with the Federal Inflation Reduction Act and facilitated through Health Source RI make a huge difference for individuals and families of lower modest income but with income too high to qualify for right care at the state's Medicaid program. As the example I described suggests, frontline and essential workers too often live with economic insecurity. And these workers are, are disproportionately uh, black and Latino and Rhode Islanders and women. Now we call these workers essential while at the same time paying, not paying them enough to afford their most basic needs, not enough to affirm the necessity and value of their work. Key finding seven, looking at a three-person family with income at 141% of the federal poverty level, shows how child care and health care assistance together can make the difference between a family being in the red and being in the black each month. Strengthening such programs will help increase economic security and opportunities for low-income Rhode Islanders and to decrease racial, ethnic, and gender disparities. Well, those are the seven key findings of our report. I'll just note if you're interested in learning more about the data sources and calculations for the Rhode Island Standard of Need, we see the detailed methodology, se methodology section at the end of the report, and of course, we'll be happy to answer questions soon. And with that, I'll turn over the podium to, and Mike, to Weona, well, not the mic, <laughs> to Weona Nelson Davies, the Executive Director of the Economic Progress Institute. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, can we all give it up again to Alan, the lead author and researcher on the I would like to start my remarks by acknowledging a few people, so bear with me before I get to the Rhode Island Center of Need and what I'm hoping we get to do with this report. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here with us today. Um, very last minute, we invited you to hear this, and we know you're here because you care about these issues. So thanks for being here today. I would also like to thank the rest of the EPI team because this was indeed a team effort. Um, the many drafts 
editing, read reading, try not to read read because we're tired of reading this report and preparing for this launch today. So thank you, Cindy, Divya, Karina, and Linda, who we made sure worked on this report before she retired. <laughs> Thanks to Juan Espinosa, who's not here, but designed the Risen and the Infographic, and Christina Brown for lending out your housing policy eye. I am grateful to you all. I would also like to acknowledge those who support our mission to provide evidence-based research and advocacy for improving the economic well-being of communities of color and low and modest income Islanders. The Rhode Island Foundation, Stoneman Family Foundation, and E. Casey Foundation and the Carter Family Charitable Trust. Special thanks to the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy for their technical assistance with the data and the case scenario we shared here today. Thanks to the Northam Corporation Foundation for funding the design and printing of this report. And thanks to our community partner, ARP, for stepping in and saying yes to supporting this launch. And a big thank you to our United Way family for partnering with us to plan and host this event and lending us your communications team. Now to the report. The Rhode Island Center of Need is an important report because it tells a story. A story of many who are struggling to meet ends meet and what can be done to close the gap between income and expenses. And this is one of many stories told by advocacy organizations throughout the state. I encourage you to check out the Housing Work Factbook for the story of the lack of affordable housing and how cause burden our communities are. The Kids Count Factbook for the story of the well-being of children in Rhode Island. Just this week, the Rhode Island Life Index was published on how Rhode Islanders perceive their quality of life, and we also have the state of homelessness. So there are a few examples of the many stories we continue to share because it's important that we hear and do something about it. I'm hopeful that the time will come when we can say we finally heard these stories and are going to commit to change the outcomes in transformative ways. So what is the moral of the story of the Rhode Island Standard of Need? One. It emphasizes that government play a crucial role in ensuring that all residents can at least meet basic needs. And this includes all governments, federal, state, and municipalities. Two, the Rhode Island Center of Needs tells the story of a call to action. A call to action to first collect more data specifically more de-aggregated data when it comes to race and ethnicity. We kept going back and forth because I was saying, where are the stories of indigenous communities? Where are the breakdown of Asian communities? We need to collect more data because those stories remain untold. It's also a call to action to update the methodology that informs our decision. For years, EPI and others have been highlighting the fact that the federal poverty level that we use to determine the needs of our communities is extremely outdated and inaccurate about the reality people are currently facing. Data is information we need to make policies. And so the better informed we are, hopefully the better policies we can make. It's a call to action for a fair and living wage, for low wage workers, for essential workers. Our current minimum wage, even with the recent increases, is still not a living wage, and families cannot meet ends meet. It is a call to action to enhance work support programs like childcare and housing and healthcare subsidies, to increase government assistance programs like Rhode Island Works and SSI, to provide tax credits, because we saw what it did during the pandemic when families had access to tax credits. And enhanced policies, like paid family leave, that centers equity to ensure that low-wage workers can fully participate. It is a call to action to address racial and gender disparities with intentional policies that will close the gap. 
I would like to end by making this clear. The ultimate goal should be working together to stop the cycle of poverty and put Rhode Islanders on the path for upward mobility. Poverty is a real barrier, and policy solutions that help Rhode Islanders meet their basic needs is only the starting point. That's the least we can do as a community and as a government. We must continue to lead with equity, address the disparities we hear about here today and you will read in the report. We must close the income and expense gap because no matter how hard our families work, they simply cannot afford to meet their basic needs. And we must continue to create opportunities where all Rhode Islanders can thrive. And so I hope you read this story that a Rhode Island Center of Need report and join us and other advocacy group in this very room to continue to do something about these um, issues we highlighted. So thank you for showing up today. Thank you.